Hello everyone. Yeah, since I think like many of you are already here, we are going to just start now. So yeah, welcome to the Fighter Hacks 191. As you all can see already from the screen, today we are going to talk about yeah project intern. We are calling this Fighter Hacks project intern, and we are going to talk about anything related with internships, new grad positions in Singapore and even overseas. And yeah, you can try to join our Telegram channel here, the Project Intern Telegram group, where, where we discuss a lot of things related with that. And you can also join the NES Hackers Telegram chat, where we, as Chai mentioned before, we are talking a lot of things related with tech-related and stuff. And yeah, without further ado, let's just continue uh, uh, with our session today. Yep, so first of all, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Steven. I'm currently a year three computer science student in NUS. I'm also part of the NUS Hackers core team member. And yeah, I do my I did my uh, previous internships uh, two years ago, uh, last year in C Group, and uh, this year, this summer, in Google. And yes, yeah, I will introduce yeah. myself. Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Chaitanya, but you can just call me Chai. Uh, I'm also year three computer science, also an NES Hackers core team member, and I did my year one internship at CBWO, and this summer I was working at Karina. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Jai. Okay, yeah, so uh, first of all, we are going to share a little bit about like our schedule for today. So we are starting a bit earlier, but it's only like a few minutes away. So we are in the first 40 minutes, uh, Chai and me, we are going to share about like a little bit about um, internships, why you should take an internship, what is actually internship itself, and how can you get the internship. And then we will have like five minutes break, followed by a panel discussion. In the first 15 minutes, Chai and I, go we are going to ask a few questions that we have prepared beforehand. And afterward, you can ask, like, uh, we will talk about like the questions that you can ask through the link here. Yep. Yeah, so throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in this Slido. Uh, you can go to the Slido project intern or you can also scan the QR code. Feel free to ask any questions. We will answer as many questions as possible during the Q&A, but feel free to ask anytime. Basically, you can just like ask if you in the middle, even when like Chai and I present you, uh, and you have any questions, yeah, just type it in and we will answer it later. Okay, now we are going to go into like the first part of our session today, which is why? Why should you take an internship? And as uh, Simon Sinek say, like people don't don't buy what you do, but they buy what why you do it. And today I'm going to share a little bit about why many people, and including me, do internships and what and what can you actually get about it. So in the one thing that some of you probably already realized that we need this internship for our graduation. Yeah, as you can see here from the NUS requirement, we need like the industrial experience and everyone needs uh, to have this kind of thing unless you probably plan to do FYP. And probably if you come from other universities, I believe that many other universities, they also like have requirement for, uh, for people to do internships, which is like in NUS, it could be either two times summer internship or one time ATAP, which is the whole throughout the semester. And the second reason is probably which I believe I do my internship is because I, I want to try to make use of the skills that I've learned in, the, in my classes throughout like this university life. I mean, in university, we, we learn a lot about the theory, but how do we actually make it applicable? And in internships, we actually put it into practice, building products that are use, uh, usable by the users and can make profit for the company. And even though in theory, as the meme here says that in theory, there's no gap between theory and practice, but actually in practice there is. And this is obviously depends on, on a lot of factors, probably related as well to your internship. But like we believe that like, this kind of thing will help you to get more practical results at the skills that you learn. That's cool. And you can also like take internships to actually make impact. So if you see here, like in the leftmost picture, I took it from YouTube. It's actually one of my friends. She interned at like the Flutter team in Google last year. And this year, this is video was posted in the YouTube channel for Flutter. Uh, he, was, he is presenting about his internship project and a lot of stuff. And it's super cool. Like, you see how the around like 200K 
subscribers and everyone can watch like and, and watch about how he make tools that, that is like use, beneficial for like a lot of people in the Flutter community. And then a lot of people, a lot of companies also do share about like what their interns build throughout like the summer or perhaps like if you do winter internships throughout like the winter. And one example here is Asana, which is actually like the company where one of our panelists working working on and Asana here shares about, about what their interns built in the 2019 summer and if you go to the blog post you can see how they contribute to the company what kind of like cool things they built on and then in the rightmost one you can see about like how one of like the core team members for NUS hackers Ilyang also contributed to the react repository under Facebook organization he built like some features and then yeah it's merged into the uh, repository it's super cool about like how university students can ask actually like can also make impacts to the greater community we it's through our code through our work and yeah through a lot of things and that's probably like one of the reasons why people like to take internship and during internship you can also try to know what you like oh actually some of the pictures are missing here i'm not sure why but uh basically throughout this uh what i mean by this slide is that you can try to discover what what kind of thing do you want to work on once you graduate from university? Probably some of you want to not share yet. You are still you are still new to CS and then you don't know what's going on. Probably some of you already know about like web development, app development, but there are actually like still a lot of things that we can explore on. Probably you are you will be interested in machine learning, or perhaps you might be interested in like robotics or perhaps like product management. And yeah, there are so many roles related uh, to that require technical background. And you can also try to discover whether you will feel more comfortable working in startups or perhaps like big tech companies or government entity or even trading companies. And if you go to work on full-time job, usually like people, uh, people, most of the people, they will have like a sort of like a longer commitment. Most people, they will, they will probably only leave their full-time job after being there for like one year, probably one or two years. But for internship, uh, you will notice that internship is actually like super short. It's just like three months or for like the ATAP, it's six months. And th in that short period of time, you can try to figure out whether you are a fit for the company, a fit for the job, and you can try to see whether like you, are, you want to do it once you graduate from school. And, oops. oh, oh, it's actually the animation. Oh, okay, yeah, you can, you can uh, take a look here. Yeah, and here uh, there are a lot of pictures, uh, the, uh, top left is the penguin is Linux uh, logo and then machine learning and stuff. Yeah, you can try to figure out what you like basically. And you can also try to not, uh, get to know more people. If you see here, there are a lot of photos from our panelists, from uh, the panelists from last year and from NUS Hackers core team member. When you do internships, you can get to know a lot of people. And even uh, if you, even during this COVID situation in the bottom right, I know that it's a little bit sad we cannot do like the internship like physically, but we can still like do meet virtually uh, throughout like the internship. And we can get to know more people, not only for university students, but we can also meet full-time full -time, uh, full employees who work on the company, get to know like students from other schools. And if you do your internship overseas, you can also get to know a lot of people in other countries. And it's super fun. How You can see how many people here, uh, there are so many people in these photos. And you can also try to explore the world, especially if you do your internship overseas. You can, uh, as you can see from the pictures here, they are exploring like cool places all around the world. And even even if you intern in Singapore, you can still explore like the offices. Usually, for many many companies, they have like cool things in their office, like uh, canteen and coffee, coffee bar, and yeah, there's just so many nice stuff. And you can you can try to figure out about like uh, what how's the culture of the company what it feels like to work there whether like you will be comfortable working in the company after that or or perhaps work in the city where the company is in and yeah probably money and first is also one of the things that many people tend to do their internship for but i will just want to highlight here that this is uh, this shouldn't be the main reason why you, you do internship because internship is I at least for me, I believe that it's mainly for getting the experience, getting uh, getting to understand how it feels like to work, try to make our skills applicable, like yeah, all of the stuff that we have mentioned before. But 
my, uh, actually money and puff actually a big consideration. One thing that uh, you can see here, about, uh, you can go to the levels of FYI, for example, and see how uh, about uh, the typical salary that employee tend to receive in like many companies. And here in the right picture, uh, there's also like the intern salary table. It was actually posted on a website. It was still it was still available last year, but like it's already down this year. And but I just want to. Uh, let you know that this is like not a fixed value and people typically tend to receive different offers when they do their internships. And yeah, and you can also enjoy like the company, like many companies, they have like very cool build, uh, cool building with so many facilities inside and definitely food. Like, like there are free foods everywhere. Like um, in many companies, who don't, who don't want like free food, especially if they're like delicious. So this kind of thing is actually usually like motivate people to take internship to enjoy like to explore the building the company's office and then to get free food and then try a lot of stuff that exists there in, uh, when they work and for we all many of you now already come to the uh try thing now how to actually get one like i talk about like why we should do internships and what are like the cool things related with internship but how to actually get one and actually the answer is simple the first step that you need to do is just apply I mean, if you don't apply, then you will never get the job. So the first step you, that you need to do is apply and see how it goes later. And if you want to apply, first of all, one thing that you need is you, you need to know where to apply. There are so many companies and most companies, especially the big ones, they typically tend to have their own career page. And because like, there are so many companies all, all around the world and probably many of you are confused. Uh, and there, uh, then you need to know that there are actually a lot of places where you can uh, search like the aggregation of like or the career page. If you see the leftmost one, the intern supply, uh, you can take a look at all the companies that have opened their position. Uh, you can take a look and then cl just click some buttons there and then it will redirect you to the career page of the company. Or if you're in the middle, if you're looking for internships in Singapore, you can also take, uh, take a look at the repository made by one of the annual hackers course team member. So yes, and then if you uh, in the rightmost one, you can also try to take a look if you are interested to go for internships in the U.S. Uh, next year. I say you can you can take a look at the repository, find like all the list of companies that have opened their position and also like their career page. And yeah, there are so many companies all all around the world. There are so many options. And the first thing that you need to know is where to apply. You can take a look at the career page as well about like what are the career requirements for this company, how how this guy, what kind of people this uh, this uh, those companies looking for and yeah, basically about the job specification and find out whether like you want to apply there or not. And it will be useful as well to get to know many recruiting platforms like Jumpstart or Triple Byte, where you can also test your skill, find out what kind of role probably will probably match you when you go for the internship. And this, uh, this kind of recruiting platform will usually help you to channel with uh, their partners and they can usually most of the time they can help you get the job as well. And even like many companies, uh, I know that even though they have their own career page, they can they will use like the recruiting platforms to help them in collecting the data and assessing like your skills. And the most important thing of all is the software engineering skill. I mean, I mean it's like the thing that many software engineers, like the computer science students, tend to do. I mean, you can just now there are so many online resources available. If you are looking for internships in Facebook, let's say, you can just use any search, let's say Google search, uh, try to type Facebook internships and it will ap uh, probably appear at the top, like Facebook career page, where to apply, like the opportunities for students and new graduates, new graduates. And you can also replace Facebook by any company name. And then it will ap appear and then you can just click there and then go to the career page, click the apply button and then submit your resume and done, it's all. That's basically the first step. But how about year one? Yeah, many people probably realize, especially the year one, they are uh, wondering whether like those companies will accept year one. And based on my personal experience, I also admit that it's a little bit dis difficult uh, most of the time for year one to apply because even though my, uh, some companies, some startups, they are still uh, having, they still have positions for year one students. But many companies, especially the big ones, they tend to have like requirements to only like accept year two or year three. Like for example, uh, one uh, one company that I know is Facebook. Facebook typically only 
uh, want to accept penalty material students for the internship, un uh, unless for like some special cases, not sure about it. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of other uh, options that you can do if you are currently year one. And one popular one is the CVWO, which Chai also work on uh, he, uh, in his intro, if you notice. And there are also like the orbital that a lot of computing students can do throughout the summer uh, when they're moving from year one to year two. And there are also like open source projects in NUS. And you can also apply to the company in NUS Enterprise. So don't think that because you are year one, then you have no option. Uh, you don't have the, the chance to go for internship or enjoy like the in, try to uh, in, try the industrial life. And basically, you can basic you can uh, there are a lot of opportunities available, and you can just you can just apply there, whatever works for you, and see which one is uh, you like the most and probably is the the most suitable one for you. And the best time is to apply is actually now. Yeah, it's literally now. I mean, for many companies in Singapore, uh, probably the, the application starts a little bit late. Some, some companies I know, they also start like early next year probably. But if you are aiming, especially if you are aiming to go for internship overseas, the, typically like the application season is around this month and probably like in the next month. So you, you need to be hurry and try to take a, 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 take a look where do you want to apply. But many people, usually say like, but I'm not good enough. How can I, I, I get those kind of internships, especially the overseas one? And one thing that I want to let you know is that everybody struggles a lot. It's probably not just you, it's everyone. Even like probably, I believe that uh, the panelists who are currently here, probably in their year one or their year two, when they are about to get their first job, they're also like suffering about that. And even for me, here I got like so many rejections. It's uh, I only like put around six here, but actually I also got like an, 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 still a number of rejections in my email. And even but like one thing that uh, you need to uh, you need to re, uh, take a note is that like this kind of rejection letters you shouldn't be afraid of it. Instead, like you should take this kind of rejection letters as a motivation for you. It means that you need to push yourself higher and learn from the mistake that you want. For me, let's say when, whenever like, I, I got my rejection letter, I tried to think about like why I didn't make it, what kind of, what kind of thing that I need to do so that like, I can make it probably next year. And yeah, th this kind of thing should be a motivation. And uh, don't be afraid. Probably you are not a match for company A, but I believe if, and perhaps I, you are also not a match for company B, but if you apply to, let's say, I don't know, uh, tens or perhaps like, Hundred company, I believe that there will be a match for you in one of uh, in one of the companies that you apply to. And one important thing is that it's a birth, not a race. So you don't need to try to uh, compete. It's not like a competition with other people. You don't need to want uh, to worry about like, oh, actually this person is much better than me. I will definitely not be able to make it. Uh, and because like, there are so many internships available, there are so many positions available. So, and many companies, they usually just have like a minimum bar. So if you pass that certain bar, then you will most likely get the job. So you don't need to, work, to worry about other people. Just try to learn and improve yourself. Make sure that you can pass the bar and meet all the uh, skill requirements to get the job. But Steven, my resume really has nothing in it. And yeah, if you feel like your resume really has nothing and uh, that's probably one thing that makes you afraid to start applying for internships. Then we'll, one thing that uh, I want to discuss a little bit about this is the step zero, which is actually also important, an important step before you start going for internship. And it's about preparing to apply. So how to fill in your resume, especially when you are just probably year one or perhaps you don't have that many work experience. One, uh, one thing that you could do is just try to start your own project. One example here is uh, from one of the previous, uh, NUS core team hack, uh, member, NUS hackers core team member, at five. He already graduated actually from NUS and now he's doing his master in Stanford. But pre uh, before he did like his personal project building a Tetris game. You can see about like it's actually how it's actually fun. You can, uh, you can go to the link and then play the game as well. And with this kind of thing, it can showcase your skill, how you can actually code, not only talk with all the theories that you learn in school, but you can also turn it into like a product. And it's probably also fun. You can build this game, and then after you build that, you can play. You can even invite other people to play your game. And one 
interesting uh, thing that one interesting interesting quote that I got is that I hear the quote from uh, advice recruiter when he applied to his job at Twitter before, and his recruiter actually said that oh I play your Tetris game it is very fun, and this shows about how actually like the recruiter, the uh, people at the companies who are probably want to test whether like you are suitable for the company or not. They are also like looking at your resume. If you have project ideas, they also take a look at it. So like uh, this showcase about how you can actually build projects that are meaningful and then it can attract like, other people to showcase your skills. But Steven, I don't know anything. I don't, uh, how can I start a project? I don't know how to code or perhaps I don't know how to build a website, build a game or build an app. Yeah, if you feel something like that, then definitely the, if you, one thing that I want to let you know that for CS, fortunately, there are so many online resources available and you can basically start anytime. You don't need to postpone, oh, I don't, uh, you, can, you don't need to postpone until like you take the classes in NUS or yeah, whatever it, whatever like your reason to procrastinate. So you can basically just start to Googling or perhaps search what, uh, where you can learn from. Uh, I, I will give like a couple of uh, uh, links here. So uh, let's say if you are looking for a build website or any other things, you can take a look at the uh, Mozilla MBN web docs and learn about like what are like the things to work on like a uh, build website uh, project. And you can also go to the Odin project to take a look at the example projects there and then like the step-by-step, -step, the tutorials about like how to build the project there. You can also like attend the events by NUS Hacker School. Uh, Hacker School by NUS hackers. There are a lot of cool uh, sessions there. Like last week, we have like the tutorial intro to uh, Python. And then here in the last year, we have like the intro to Git and GitHub. And I believe like we'll have like such session as well later this year. And yeah, you, you can take a look as well at our site, take a look at our past events and see whether you can, you can learn, even learn from like our uh, archive. And the best time to build things is actually, is actually also now. So you don't need to start postponing saying perhaps something like, oh, I don't have time now, probably, and I don't know anything, oh, probably I'm gonna just take my classes first, and then, yeah, see how later when I get to know more things. Because when you want, when you want to get a job, actually, you need to start to build as soon as possible, make sure that you can showcase your experience when you apply for the job, and there are so many, and probably, like, most of the things that I told you before, probably you won't find them in the, like, courses in NUS, because as I mentioned in the beginning of this session, like many uh, courses in NUS, they are more like theoretical. And you, it's good because you can learn like all the basic concepts. But sometimes when you want to build like the project, you also need like some practical skills about, let's say, when you learn like some algorithms, actually they are already implemented in like some libraries. When you actually want to build products that use the algorithm, you can just like import some kind of library. And that's why it's very important for you to get to know like this kind of practical things. And you can also try a lot of other things. For example, if you're interested in machine learning, you can check out like the website for Kaggle. And there are so many projects there in Kaggle that you can take a look and start uh, following the tutorial. And then, yeah, build a lot of cool projects and you can also showcase them in your resume or like when you, when you talk with, the, uh, when you have like an interview, you can also tell the story about like what kind of challenge you encounter when building the project. Or if you are interested in algorithms, or competitive programming, you can also take a look at code courses. There are so many programming algorithm questions. You can assess your skills, which is like this kind of algorithmic questions usually are important for the technical interview because technical interview, they are usually on, uh, asking algorithmic questions. Uh, Chai will talk more about it later. And if you are interested in security, you can also uh, go to the offer the wire, let's say, try to look out for like the security questions, CTF questions try to join the competitions that are usually like, they usually always have CTF competitions every week, I believe. And you can, yeah, you can basically start anytime to try to take a look at this kind of thing if you are interested to improve your skills. Yeah, and so now we are going to back to the step one, the application, and Chai will talk more about it. Uh, oh, hello everyone, just let me share my screen. Uh, yeah, Stephen, can you disable your screen share? Uh, okay, is my screen visible? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so now, now that Stephen has covered everything about why you should do an internship, I hope you guys are, some of your worries are alleviated and maybe you're a bit more inspired to apply to internships. And 
uh, how you go about learning stuff. I would cover more of the process actually. And I tend to break it down into two, two major sections. The first one is actually sending in the application. And the first one is when uh, someone gets back to you and you move into the entire inter interview process. Yeah. So yeah, back to step one, which is applying. Okay, so uh, this is something I want to get all, get done with and put it aside soon enough. So there's this concept called referrals uh, when you apply for internship applications, which is at bigger companies, uh, recruiters go through a lot of resumes and a referral is basically when someone who is, who is either working at the company or has worked there before, uh, refers you to the recruiter saying that, hey, I know this guy and I know he's quite good. So maybe you should uh, give, him, give him or her a shot at hiring, right? And then in my experience, typically it gets you past the resume screening stage. Uh, and that's all well and good. Uh, but the more important thing I would like to point out, at least in my personal experience, has been that you should get to know your seniors uh, because they can help you get referred and they can help you tell, you tell more about their entire experience of interning in different places. Yeah, so it's, yeah, so definitely, I, my personal takeaway from the entire idea of referrals has been that I should get to know my seniors. And I think you should try to get to know your seniors too, because they can help you a lot and guide you through the entire internship process. Yeah, uh, the meme is irrelevant. Uh, it's, it's basically about, so some people who refer, uh, so let's say if I'm, I'm, if I'm working at a company and I refer you and you eventually get the internship, then I get some bonus because I refer, refer to successful candidate. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Oh, so this is this is basically how referral looks now. So uh, typically you are the one chasing recruiters to give you to give you an interview, but when you get a referral, the recruiter gets back to you on, on their own accord saying, hey, do you want to give an interview with us? Yeah, but another thing I would like to point out is that it's only a good to have and not a must to have. Uh, it can help you get, give a bit of a head start in the process, but it's definitely not a must to have. So you shouldn't be dejected and not stop trying to apply simply because you don't have a referral. In my year one, I applied to all the bigger companies and none of them got back to me, but I think the entire process of trying it out uh, really taught me quite a bit and just made me more efficient in the next iteration when I had to apply all over again. Yeah. Okay, so coming to the more important, more important aspects, the resume. Uh, the resume uh, tends, in my experience, res the resume for tech internships and jobs tends to be a little different than uh, internships in other areas. Uh, and to, I, I won't go into too much details about it, but if you want to find out more resources about where you can look at how a resume should be structured, there's a Yangshun's Tech Interview Handbook, which is, it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a comprehensive resource on everything internship and job related. So there, there's a section on resumes and how you should structure it there. Uh, it goes into quite a bit of detail. Uh, there's another uh, website by one of our panelists, Kenneth. Uh, so Kenneth, he documented his evolution of resumes all the way from year one, where I noticed that he didn't have a lot of tech stuff in his resume from all the way to year four, where obviously he, he's gotten quite a good, quite good internships. So I think that it's, that website is a lot of takeaways and how you should structure your resume and. It also documents the entire experience of applying and getting internships. So this, this is another resource you can check out. Okay. Uh, uh, so now moving on, something I've noticed, uh, there are a lot of popular resume templates and I term them as popular and not good because I'm not sure how you exactly define good. Uh, so some of the more popular resume templates are, there's a resume template called the resume. You, you'll see, you'll see, you can go to the links and you can check it out. Uh, and a couple of them are written in LaTeX. And when I was in year one, I didn't know LaTeX at all. But there's this website called Overleaf where you just change text and make your resume look better in LaTeX. So you can check out check that out as well. Uh, and if you're not interested, and if maybe those those templates don't really fit your needs, then you can just Google resume template. Go to Google Docs. Uh, you really, re finding a resume template should not be hard because you can just Google it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on. Uh, an important point I'd like to make, uh, your resume, in my experience, should be one page. Uh, maximum two pages if you have a tons of things to mention. Uh, a personal rule of thumb I tend to follow is if there's anything non-tech which is in my resume and I can swap it out with something tech related, just do it. So for example, let's say I have some freelance photography experience I've mentioned, but there's a side project I'm not mentioning. Uh, I should just swap it out 
because that's what is more relevant to your application uh, not 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 experiences which are non tech right if you have if you re if you're really struggling to fit a lot of stuff fit it into one page i think that's a good problem to have and i think you should learn how to prioritize what stuff to fit uh, so maybe just not mention all your side projects maybe just mention some yeah but point being re recruiters go through a lot of resumes and they don't have a lot of time so you should try to pack as much information as you can in the least space possible yeah so general rule of thumb try to keep your resumes to one page uh, uh, and this is another question i've received from a lot of juniors of mine uh, that how much do cover letters matter uh, this is just my opinion i'm not sure if that's the correct answer i'm pretty sure maybe the panelists can talk more about it later on but uh, at least in my in my opinion on this mention in the application it's really not necessary so it's not and uh, if you write a bad or temp cover letter it's usually worse than writing no cover letter so let's say there, there's this place which never asked you for a cover letter but you, you just copy paste this cover letter you wrote already recruiters have a lot of experience in reading cover letters and they can usually they usually can know if you're just writing a template cover letter or if you genuinely wrote a cover letter simply for this application yeah so in my opinion cover letters are not important unless necessary and a templated one is actually quite bad uh, on the other hand though if you're really interested in working at a place, uh, then I think you should take the effort to write a good cover letter because I think it does make some sort of impression, provided you manage to actually get your point through. So if there's a place you really want to work at uh, and you know your reasons for why you should work at that place and why you would be a good candidate, definitely go ahead and write, write a good cover letter. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so cover letters are something which are not usually addressed. So these are just my personal opinions. Sorry. Yeah. Mm, okay. So uh, the second step. Uh, okay. Another thing I'd like to point out is in my year one, I sent a lot of applications and the takeaway was that it really does not take too much time to send applications. Uh, typically tech internship applications, they just ask you for your basic contact details and your resume. So if you have a resume ready, it really takes you just five to 10 minutes to fill out the application and send it out. So I think even whether you're year one, whether you're year two, please take out the effort to apply to as many places as you want to. So don't be don't be very daunted by oh the, the, this application process is probably going to be too complicated for me, so I shouldn't even try it out uh, because it's really not. At least the sending application part is one of the easiest process easiest pipe processes I've come across. Now. Yeah. So uh, that that brings me to the second part, which tends to be one of the more intensive part of the entire internship application preparation and the actually the actual actual process of getting the internship which is the entire interview process so uh, typically this is how the standard process tends to be like so once you submit your application and get past the resume screening you you get an online test with some coding question and let's say you pass that online test then it's followed by a face to face interview Right. So let's say you sent an application, your resume got screened, the recruiter got back. They send you, uh, more often than not, they send you an online test to do, which is on platforms like HackerRank, not necessarily HackerRank, some, some kind of algorithmic slash design question. You need to pass certain test cases. And that's how it is. And once, once you finish that online test, let's say you pass it successfully, then, then you're called for a face-to-face -face interview with the recruiter or their engineers. Uh, but a disclaimer that this is not the only process around. A lot of places I've applied to, they never give me an online test. They just ask, call me directly for a face-to-face -face interview. A lot of places never asked me for a technical interview. They just looked at, looked at my assignments, talked to me about my projects, and then decided or to give me an offer or not. So this is not, this is not the only process around, but it tends to be one of the more common processes around. Yeah, so I'd like to point that out. Uh, Moving on, how to prepare for interviews. Uh, I, at least for me, this is the part that takes most of the effort uh, prior to the well, prior to when the internship season actually starts. So preparing interviews takes a bit of time, in my opinion, because you need the style of questions asked for some companies tends to be a particular style which you might not be used to, and so you you need to practice that. And uh, the good thing as the good thing is about everything, most things CS related, there are a lot of resources available online. Uh, the first one is uh, this book called Cracking the Coding Interview. This is a book which 
sample which includes some of the most popular inter interview questions. It also includes a lot of general internship and uh, job related stuff. So it's it's definitely a good book to check out. I've, I've, I've read it and it's, I personally found it quite insightful and it did help me in the entire process. So you, you can you can try to find the book. Uh, but let's say you don't want to read a book. Uh, again, I'll, I'll talk about a resource I've mentioned previously, the, the Tech Interview Handbook. It has a lot of internship related stuff and just in general interview questions. Uh, yeah, so you obviously you can check out the Tech Interview Handbook as well. Uh, so there are many types of questions asked in a tech interview. The one of the most common tends to be algorithmic questions, and it it's especially in bigger companies like Google and Facebook. This is the pop. This is the kind of questions asked. Uh, my personal opinion is it's necessary evil, necessary because that's 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 the kind of process that is around you. You have to bear with it. Not evil, not exactly evil. Maybe evil is too strong a word, but uh, oftentimes it's not reflective of the actual work you do in your internship. Uh, so let's say you solve a lot of algorithms, but in in when you actually work at the place, you're doing general, you're doing software engineering, which is not dealing with a lot of algorithms, right? So yeah, it might not be reflective of the kind of work you do, but it's still something which which companies use to hire candidates. So it's 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 a necessary even though. Uh, and then do well in your CS 2040. Uh, I think, okay, I think the underlying point is that the kind of questions asked are similar to the kind of things you study in CS 2040. So a lot of data structures and algorithms, but so you should try to do well in your CS 2040, but if you didn't, that's fine. I struggled in CS 2040 too. Uh, but uh, one thing I realized is that even though CS 2040 was a little, little tough for me, uh, internship applications and technical interviews, they really just require a lot of practice. So if you give it consistent and enough practice, even though you didn't do well in CS 2040, you'll get used to the kind of questions asked in technical interviews, which is why you try to do well in your CS 2040, but if you didn't, that's completely fine. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, so, okay, moving on. This is, this is one of the most common resources for interview questions, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, I think lead code is quite a good bank of questions you can, try out. So uh, I, I tend to plan, practice on lead code myself. So it, 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 it has a good set of questions. So you can definitely try it out. And it ten, it's the style of questions asked in lead code tends to be a little different from hacker. And I won't go into too much detail, but yeah. Uh, lead code is one of the question banks you can try out. Uh, there's, so these are the kind of questions you can go to the link and check it out. I won't go into it, but typically that's how an algorithmic question looks like. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but yeah, coming back to disclaimers, algorithmic questions are not the only kind of questions asked. Uh, a lot of companies ask you general system design questions. Uh, a general system design question would be like design a game of cards without the graphical stuff. So they'll give you some basic requirements of how a game of cards is supposed to be like, and you're supposed to code it out. Uh, and the objective of those kind of questions is to make sure that you code well, and you can handle all the edge cases which are around. So they don't test you necessarily for your algorithmic prowess, but they test you for your design skills. Uh, some, some questions ask you to review code. So talk about the ways that code can be improved. Uh, there's also bug hunting. So I know that Stripe as a company, at least used to ask bug hunting questions in the interview. So you have a question, but the output is not coming out as expected. So you work with your interviewer to find out bugs in the code. Uh, there are also assignments, so it'll be something of the sort, your recruiter gets back to you uh, and gives you some sort of assignment to do over the week, for example. And once the week is over, you're supposed to send them back your code base for the assignment. So it can be something like design a Reddit client or design a Twitter crawl. Uh, but the, it tends to be over a longer period, period of time. Yeah. Okay, so typically these are the kinds of questions asked. Uh, if the kind of internship changes, for example, let's say it's a security internship, then probably the kind of questions asked also change. But for general software engineering internships, these are typically these are the kinds of questions asked. Yeah, okay, moving on. Uh, okay, let's say, let's say uh, there's another aspect to your inter interview process, which is not so technical. Uh, and it's, it's called behavior, I, I term it behavioral questions. So it tends to be probably with your 
uh, probably with your recruiter, your HR manager, or for example, the engineering team lead. Uh, it's in my experience, it's done in almost all companies and it checks whether you personally are a good fit for the company. A lot of companies have their own unique cultures and the kind of people they want, uh, ideally the kind of people they want should be the kind of people which align with their culture. So uh, behavioral interviews tend to be a form, uh, a way to judge that and also a way to judge whether you're not a murderer or not. It's just, yeah, then that's also one of it. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think the reason is that yeah, they, they want to check whether you're a good fit for a company, a nice person to work with, because a lot of software engineering is working with people. It's, uh, it's working with people and writing code. So working with people, it tends to be a very important aspect. Yeah. Mm. Some sample behavioral questions, just, just very standard ones. Tell us more about yourself. Tell us more about your project. Uh, and uh, when I was interviewing last year, so my year one, uh, I really struggled with Tell us more about yourself. So that tends to be one of the first questions asked in an interview, even, even in technical interviews. And uh, I personally, I did not think too much about it. So I never approached that question well. And uh, this is the kind of approach I now follow. So I first said the scene. Okay, so I, the, the kind of approach I now follow is you, you need to think about it a bit. Uh, so although these questions are easier than technical questions, uh, you should still give it some thought. Uh, a kind of framework I follow. So let's say I have to describe a project, right? So this is the kind of framework I follow. So I first give some more context about the project itself and describe its purpose. Then I explain what I did in more technical details and I share the outcome. The outcome can be every anything from what kind of impact the project or internship you did made, or what are your takeaways from it? What did you enjoy? What did you really hate? So just stuff like that. Yeah. Mm, okay. So Okay, uh, another point to make, at least when you do interviews, you should come with some questions prepared beforehand, at least in my opinion, uh, because that demonstrates interest from your side for the company as well. And that, uh, that usually leaves quite a good impression. So whenever you go to interviews, good idea to get prepared with some questions and go there. So these are just some questions you can look at if you have no idea what to ask. Yeah, uh, okay. Okay, after this entire talk of why you should do an internship, why you shouldn't, why you should do an internship, how do you go about getting one and going through the entire process, I, I think it's quite important to talk about why you should not do an internship uh, because you might have your reasons uh, and they're completely fair reasons. Uh, the one of them is do your own project or startup. It's a lot about priorities. So let's say you're really into entrepreneurship or you really want to work on an idea which will take up a lot of your time. Uh, then it's, in my opinion, it's not good to work on, it's not good to do an internship at the same time because maybe you just don't have enough time and you should really give your time to something you really want to give time to. So if you really want to do your own project or startup, you don't need to do an internship. It's not a requirement. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do something else like research, uh, some of my very smart friends, they decided to not do an internship and just do research instead uh, because research tends, uh, if you, if, if you really want to take research seriously, it's a full-time thing. So maybe you just want to explore something else like research and not a software engineering internship. And that's fine too. Uh, and if you're an undergrad who's still, thinking, who's, who's still thinking about whether you should go for an internship or research, there are resources. So there's Europe in NUS uh, and you can just Google it up. Uh, some profs also, ha they have positions open for undergrads. So yeah, uh, gen you don't need to work at a company doing a software engineering internship. You can work under a prof or do some research as well. Finally, more time with your family. Uh, over my past two internship cycles, I haven't had gotten time to go back home, at least in the summers when, when the holiday season tends to be the longest. And if you really want to spend some time with family, that's completely fine. You don't need to do an internship. Maybe you should just take some time out and go spend some time with your family. Yeah, so these, these are just some reasons why you would not want to do an internship. Uh, just some words of wisdom, luck plays, okay, luck plays a part and luck favors those who are prepared. Uh, the entire internship process, luck really plays a role. So maybe, for example, even though I know that I can solve a technical question, my nerves might not be good that particular day, simply because of bad luck. And that, that's fine. So point being, luck plays quite an important role in getting internships. 
but at the same time luck favors those who are prepared so if you're not prepared you're definitely not going to do well but if you're prepared you're probably you, there are chances that you'll probably do quite well in your internship interviews and the general process so luck plays a part but it favors those who are prepared so you should take time to prepare lot but shouldn't be de- dejected if you didn't get an internship because it might just be bad luck uh everyone can be up there so in the chats i saw wh- why all the panelists so up uh but uh then uh at least when i hear a lot of juniors saying oh that senior is quite up there uh and i don't really know what that means uh but i would like to point out that even people who seem like they're at very prestigious places it took a lot of effort from their side to reach those places uh and if you give enough amount of effort you can get the you can get the internships or jobs you want to get as well so yeah you can be up there too uh but it might require a bit of struggle and effort yeah uh so that 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 ends our presentation for the time being uh, we'll be taking a 5 minutes break you can go and drink water take some rest and we'll be starting with a panel session so you can we have around 10 panelists who who have quite a bit of experience with the entire internship process so if you want to ask more specific questions please stay uh, type out your questions on the slido and we will be going through those questions now yeah so we'll be starting at 7:56 
Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I think everyone has gotten enough of a break, hopefully. Uh, we'll be starting with our panel session. It's quite, it, it's quite OTOD, so you can, you can drink water if you want now. It's funny to be stressed. Okay. Uh, we'll be, so we'll first have an introduction for all our panelists. Uh, and yeah, the panelists can then say hi. Uh, the first one is Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth, do you want to talk? Hey. Hey, everyone. My name is Kenneth. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Asana, uh, and I'm based in SF. So it's 5 a.m. now, so just in my bathroom. But, uh, but yeah, I did uh, five software engineering internships while I was in NUS. Uh, I was a CS major, and uh, I extended my graduation by one year just to like fit in more internships. Thanks, Kenneth. Uh, next, we have Yu Chuan. Yeah, hi, I'm Yu Chuan. I'm also, I'm also in, I'm also based out of San Francisco, but I'm in Singapore right now. I'm a software engineer at a firm, which is a fintech startup in SF. And previously, I was an intern at a firm at Facebook, and I, was, I did CVW for two years and was team lead in the second year. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks, Yishan. Uh, next, we have Ilyang. Everyone. Yeah, so I'm a year four CS student. Uh, I'm also an NUS Smarts core team member, and uh, I'm also contributing to React right now. So uh, th this summer, I did an MLH fellowship. Uh, I was supposed to be at Facebook Venno Park, but uh, coronavirus canceled it. So uh, last year, I, did, uh, I was in Facebook Singapore, and I also did CVW for one year. And uh, before that, I did... Uh, I did an internship at the Center for Strategic Info Com Technology, which is just a basically it's a some government agency. Yeah. Okay. We also have Bernard. Uh, Bernard. Yeah, muted. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, can hear. Yeah, so I'm a year four student in NUS, um, doing a double degree in computer science and applied mathematics. And uh, in the summer of year two and year three, I did internships at Jump Trading. And, yeah. Uh, okay, next we, we have Jethro. Hello, Jethro. Hello. Yeah, hey. Hello. Yeah, so uh, I'm Jethro. Uh, I'm currently a research assistant in the Clear NUS lab, which uh, focuses on robotics and interaction with humans. Uh, so previously, I did a SWE internship at Carousel, and then subsequently, a uh, ML internship at Carousel, and then a uh, data science and ML internship at Twitter. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, thanks Jethro. Uh, we also have Karen. Hello. I'm a year five CS student, and um, I like to design also. So that stupid panda, okay, not stupid, that panda over there is like, I draw it, draw it for like one of my school projects. Yeah. And okay, so... Previously, for like uh, this summer, I interned at Google, and previously I interned at this tech startup in SF called Zeus, and before that, it's like also Zendesk and Grab. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks, Karen. Uh, we also have Monica. Uh, hi, I'm Monica. I'm a year four CS student. So previously, I interned at Google together with Karen. And then I also interned in London in a games company called Improbable. And then I did step internship at Google as well last year. And I interned in a small startup called Robo in my first year summer. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, we also have Julius. Uh, Hi. Julius. Yes, uh, I'm, so I'm in year four student uh, studying computer science currently. So I did uh, two internships at Stripe once in San Francisco and once in Singapore. And I was also in Asana earlier in the year for winter internship. And during my uh, first internship, I did it at Garena. Thanks, Jethro. Uh, thanks, Julius. <laughs> uh, OK, finally, we have Francis. Uh, hey, Francis. Um, hi, I, um, I'm Francis. Uh, unlike the rest, I studied um, computer engineering. And unlike the rest, I also didn't do a software engineering um, internship. But I, I did um, intern at um, DSO doing cybersecurity stuff. And um, I'm currently doing um, augmented reality and virtual reality work in one of the labs in NUS, particularly the Cube Center. That's why you asked me about that. So thanks, thanks, Francis. So as, as you guys can probably notice, uh, the kind of panelists we have 
have worked in bigger places. They worked at startups. Some of them are doing research. Some of them are doing more engineering stuff. So feel free to ask whatever question you have. So don't 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 think that you, the panelists might not know something about it. Okay. Yeah. So we will start with the questions. The first one being, uh, so how how different are school internship and full time jobs are? Uh, the, the panelists, you you guys can take turns in speaking. If you don't want to speak, it's fine. But uh, I think the point is how, how, how different is working full-time from an internship? And I think Kenneth, each one, everyone who has graduated can speak a bit more about it. Um, yeah, I don't think I really need to talk about how different school and internship yeah. is. <laughs> They're very, okay. So one thing that I found very different between full-time internship was that you're not working on a timeline anymore. And that's actually kind of similar to school. For schools and internships, you know that um, everything finishes at the end of the semester, unless you're doing a 5 or whatever. But in an internship, you know that you, you deliver it at the end of three months and then you leave. But for full-time, you actually get, you have a much longer period. And that actually lets you like plan and okay. think about what you want to work on. Okay. Yeah, so that's probably the biggest difference, I think, for full-time. Uh, can I ask, is, is the kind of stuff you do more 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 important stuff for the business itself when you do a full-time job so more core stuff more more extensive stuff than into uh, then let's compare it to an internship i think this will depend personally personally yes i think i get to well first when you're full-time you get to decide on what your priorities are your given goals mm. and then and okay this is more Maybe this is more of a startup experience, but you're given like high level goals and then you figure out how to get your, your team and your company there. So in that respect, you are doing more important work. Whereas like as an intern, you're probably just given an intern project and mm -hmm. your mentor tells you, okay, you need to do this. You need to shift this. This needs to work. But in like a, in like a bigger company, um, you may get, you may get like a more similar experience where as an entry level engineer in a big, com a big company, you just get orders handed down and you don't really decide like what needs to be done. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, thanks, Yuchuan. Does, does anyone else have something to say about this? Otherwise yeah. we can move to this. I can add on. Yeah. Um, so I think Yuchuan covered a bit on kind of like the growth and impact differences between internship and full-time jobs. So like that's kind of how I want to kind of reframe this. Um, so um, the kind of impact that you have uh, during, well, school, you're mostly just growing. You're not really having any impact on the real world. Um, and uh, for internship, your growth is uh, restricted to like a three month period. Um, for full-time job, you have a much longer horizon. And as Yushan mentioned, there's like no fixed timeline. Uh, so in that sense, you can kind of plan out your growth uh, over a longer period of time. Um, in terms of impact um, between internship and full-time job, personally at Asana, uh, when I was interning, or like Asana's philosophy for our interns is uh, for interns to be working alongside full-timers as if they are a full member of the team. So they're not mm. given like a intern project that they, they alone are working on. Yeah. Um, but there are also many uh, companies out there that you know assign their interns a dedicated project um i think that also kind of affects the kind of impact that you have um if you are is assigned a you know low risk and um maybe uh isolated project away from the rest of the team then yeah. uh your your impact could vary in that sense mm. yeah. okay Thanks, thanks, Kenneth and Yishuan. Uh, moving on. Uh, so, okay, how did you manage to get your first internship? I think a lot of people have this question and it tends to be, yeah. So how much preparation did you do? What are the important things to keep in mind if I'm, I'm just, I'm someone who has just started to move into the entire internship process and it's new to the idea. Yeah. Anyone? I can start. Um, I think 
getting your first internship is probably the most uncertain part of the entire process. Um, and I think most people kind of think of it as like, oh, maybe I'll just wait until I'm like year two or year three and then companies will see that I'm a more senior student and uh, like they will kind of take me over other people maybe or like they'll consider me more seriously. Um, I think that's true to some extent um, in that some companies only look at people in the second year or third year. Um, but I feel like preparation is something that really has to happen early, uh, mm. as early as possible. Um, so I'm trying to answer both questions at once, but let me just focus on how, how did I manage to get my first internship. Yeah. Um, I think you want to try to uh, list out everything that you know so things like, so in your resume, you try and like talk about all the school classes that you did um, that are relevant to uh, software engineering or whatever role you're applying for. Uh, and also like you know, the programming languages that you know, the skills that you know, whatever project that you did. And you, this part is kind of like, just like you're applying to many places and you're praying that one of them gets right. back to you and then you get uh, an offer and, and that you get an interview and then an offer after that. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite hard to, many other companies require that you have, or like they prefer people with prior internship experience. So um, yeah, this is possibly really difficult and hard, but I think the, the emphasis is like um, really putting yourself out there and applying to a lot yeah. of places, even okay. though it's likely that you won't get many right. uh, interview callbacks. Um, oh. Yeah. As for preparation, um, so I like to, so I wrote the blog post on kind of how my resume evolved. I think I want to break it down to two parts in terms of preparation. I think the first part is about like building up skills and experience. Um, and I don't want to dive into too much detail here, um, but it's really about uh, what are the skills and experience that companies are looking out for. Um, and that will help you get shortlisted for the interview. And then the second part is like preparing for those interviews. Uh, and mm -hmm. personally, I took one entire year to prepare for my interviews for US companies. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like you definitely need that long of a period, but um, doing well interviews is something that requires sustained practice. And if you have practice for a really long time, then it would give you higher chances of passing interviews. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm, thanks, thanks, Kenneth. Uh, Can I add on a bit? Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, um, so I, I think I will take this question from a slightly different angle. Um, because um, if you, you know me, I was in the ICPC team, and that probably helped a lot with the algorithm questions, but I won't really talk about, about that. I think there's another, earlier on, um, the, it was mentioned that there are two kinds of questions in the interview the algorithm question and the behavioral questions, I think. I think that was what was mentioned. Um, but since I am from, I did a trading internship, um, well, not a trading, I did an internship in a trading company, I think I would like to input, uh, give my input about what's different in, in a trading company interview. So um, algorithm questions are still almost always asked, that's perfectly normal. And sometimes they ask general system design questions as well. But I think the main difference is that there are almost no behavioral questions. Many of them did not ask any behavioral questions at all. Or if they did ask one or two, it is ma they're mainly reading off my uh, resume and I'll just talk about those projects that I did, and those, those things that I've written on my resume. But I think there's another type of question that is more important. Um, they will have many questions, many questions to see how much you know about the implementation of your favorite programming language. So perhaps another way to say this is you should know all the fancy features of programming languages, such as how uh, Java does say the late binded dynamic, uh, late binded functions, generics, templates, inheritance, exceptions, maybe, maybe multi-threading if you want to. You should know how those things can be implemented manually in say a low level language like C. And bonus points, I hate to say this, but that there are most trading companies use C++. Occasionally they use Java. I've, I know at least one that mainly uses Java, so that's not uncommon as well. But uh, we are looking for more of uh, this uh, low-level understanding of the programming language you use, so you can uh, build this programming language like 
right? And like a sword. So um, going back to the question, how did I manage to get my first internship? I think I was rather lucky that my first programming language was C++. And I was fascinated by abstractions provided by this language and how they were designed to avoid incurring runtime overhead as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'll ascribe my success in getting my first internship in the, at the end of year two to my Orbiter project, which was kind of a simulation game written in C++. Mm -hmm. And we paid Cap, sorry? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, and we paid Cap, and when we wrote it, we paid careful attention to the performance of the code. And so writing high performance code like this forced me to understand the abstractions provided by language and gave me reason to learn all the new features of that language. And I think having this project on my CV made me stand out from the rest uh, because it showed that writing, writing high performance code like this was well within my comfort zone. And to, sub to substantiate my assertion that the Orbiter project uh, actually helped, my project partner also got an internship at Jump Trading, which was where I interned at. I mean, got, yeah, I got an internship, right? Despite not being in the ICPC team. So not just, it, even though you are not in the ICPC team, it doesn't really matter. I think it's very important to have good projects. It's just that for trading companies, the projects will be a, slightly, a little bit different. We are looking more for the performance, uh, perhaps similar for the gaming industry as well. Mm -hmm. And a prerequisite to that is that you know your language really well and you're able to use the language with great skill and control. Thanks, thanks, Bernard. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to, so we'll move on to the next question. Uh, should I start from startups, big companies, training companies, Europe research? Uh, I think people who have had, uh, panelists who have had slightly different experiences from a software engineering internship can talk more about it. Uh, so probably, probably Chetro, I think you've done, you're doing research right now and you've done software engineering, so maybe you want to talk more about it. Yeah, so uh, in my year one and two, I did like software engineering internship. So I worked mainly on uh, infra and then a bit of back end and front end, like the typical web, web dev stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, year two, I did a uh, Europe. Uh, and then year three, uh, went to Twitter to do a bit of data science and machine learning. So working on a bit of their data pipelines as well as their recommendation system. Then in year four, I did FYP and now I'm doing research. So I kind of like tried the full spectrum. So I did work in a like relative, a mid-sized startup like Carousel, as well as a big company like uh, Twitter and then doing research as well. Uh, I, this is very, I feel like this is very much a personal preference. Like for me, I found um, software engineering work kind of uh, mundane because it's, it's very road. Like you pick up, uh, bug tickets, you fix them, and then, and then you go on to the next bug ticket. It's kind of the same for uh, machine learning and data science as well, where you iterate on your model, so you train, and then you change some parameters, and you train them again. Um, so for me, like, I, I quite like research because um, you, get to, you get to explore your, your own ideas. So you, you spend a lot of time in the field. So right now, I'm, I'm working on a cross between like uh, neuroscience and computing and and you, you do come up with like some some interesting ideas that you can try and and this is like you 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 do like like it's a lot more interesting to me so it, i guess you just gotta try them all mm -hmm. and and see what you like so I, i'm also still exploring like i i don't really know what i want to do and and like this research thing seems to be like the, the current best thing for me right now. So, so that's it. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks Jethro. Uh, I, I, I think Monica worked at a startup before working at bigger places like Google. So maybe you can just talk about it as, as in the difference between working at a startup and a bigger company that we can. Yeah, uh, for sure. So in my first year, uh, the startup that I work with, there are four co-founders and three interns. So the whole office is literally just like one room and one table. And like, it's, it's very different from working in a big company in a sense that uh, one, um, at that time we're still working on like a product that just recently launched. So uh, the goal is still trying to get uh, as many users as possible, trying to build all the necessary things, like yeah. all the features and stuff. But in big companies, um, you have like more resources, but in that sense, uh, you may not be able to touch like 
so many different parts of the product. So I suppose it really depends on what you like. So what I found helpful was just to have all these internships to try out the different companies. And then for me personally, I, I figure out that I prefer a company with more structure and like more support. Hence, I uh, prefer the bigger companies, but it can be different from each person. So just, yeah, try different things out and figure it out for yourself. Thanks, Monica. Just, just something I want to talk, mention as well, uh, especially for year ones, you can, you can also apply to a lot of startups. As a year one, I applied to a lot of startups and I got a couple offers. Uh, so apart from CVW or doing Orbital, uh, going to NAS Enterprise, you can go to websites like Blinz and just Google for Singaporean startups and apply to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Monica. Uh, moving on. Uh, do you think it is necessary to have a strong academic background to secure a good internship? Uh, I think it tends to be a, some, a bit of an obvious answer for, for a lot of us, but not, not for all of us. So maybe someone can t talk more about it in, in a very slight detail. Maybe Julius. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, I think one of the one of the indicators that I can tell you now is that when you apply for internship, they don't actually even ask you to upload your transcript. So uh, what they see is just like your resume and then your uh, information detail on how to contact you. Some of them might ask for cover letter, but usually that's not required. So like uh, this kind of shows that like what they're looking for is experience. And then eventually uh, when you do interviews with them, they're looking for like whether you can pass their bar of like certain technical abilities that they want their uh, like hires to have. So in, in a way, uh, like internship interviews are really, really meritocratic in terms of like, uh, it only depends on like how good you did in your interviews. And that's like basically how they try to uh, find out like whether you're a good hire. So uh I don't think that it's really necessary to have a strong academic background. So, uh, like, I think some of us might even experience that, like, we have this, some of these interviews that actually uh, sort of clash with, like, tests of or exams, and then we have to choose, and then eventually we chose one over the other. Uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, the mm -hmm. answer, like, the short answer to this is no, basically. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks, Julius. Uh, moving on. I mean, I will, can I add on to that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't really want to conflate academic background with your grades because those are actually pretty separate things. Like, mm -hmm. you could do badly in 2040 um, because it's a lot of stuff crammed into one semester. But if you go to re revisit, uh, if you revisit the topics and make sure you understand every topic, you will still have a strong algorithm background, even if you get a okay. C for 2040. Mm -hmm. And the same applies for most things. Like if you have a strong computer science foundation, um, you'll find that learning stuff and um, learning stuff, it becomes a lot easier because you understand how things work and you have a good like mm -hmm. mental model of how um, everything fits together. So I would say, I mean, school definitely isn't everything your grades definitely don't mean much at all, to be honest. But um, yeah, the fundamentals are definitely important and will, and they show up even if no one asks for your grades. Like they show up in how you approach problems and how, and how you solve them. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Yushan. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. I don't think this is too important a question. Uh, uh, okay, what are the kind of, uh, so within software engineering itself, there can be a lot of different things you can do from a technical perspective. So maybe something related to networks. So just, just in general, what are the kind of things you can do? Maybe someone who's done a bit of software engineering internships can tell us more about it. So maybe they have a lot of varied experiences. Uh, yeah. Mm. Karen, do you want to talk? Sorry, that, what do you mean by like different kinds of areas? Uh, so, uh, if you do a software engineering internship, there's a lot of stuff you can do within it, right? So, for example, for stack dev, network stuff. I'm, I'm wondering if, for example, you have had different kinds of things you've worked on. So, like, for software engineering, there's, like, different kind of areas in a company that you can do. I guess, like, kind of differs what kind of, like, company you end up, like, 
going into. So like bigger companies, they tend to like split um, everything into like many different layers. And then like your team might just be like working on like one of the layers, like maybe just like working on like the front end or like the API or like one small part of the front end of the product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's like many different things and also like um, internal tools. So there's like also like teams that just work on internal tools and like all mm-hmm. that stuff, the infrastructure and stuff. Mm-hmm. Why I was about to say. Anyone else want to add on? <laughs> uh, okay, so I, <clears throat> I mean, I can, I, I, I did some network stuff in my last internship, along with some full stack stuff as well. So a lot of it is just maybe developing systems. A lot of it maybe performance optimizations. Uh, yeah. So there, there's a lot of stuff you can do within software engineering as well. Yeah, uh, and I think that was the point of the question. <laughs> okay, m- moving on. Uh, Okay, any, any interesting things to share from your internship in, in general? I am, and this question is open to all panelists. I, I know Monica wanted to say something about it, especially like women in tech roles. Yeah, um, I think uh, one of the interesting thing about Google is there's so many resources available. So one of it is how much support and contribution they have for the like diversity and inclusion part. So like last year, I remember I applied for this like funding. So I managed to get a fully sponsored trip to the Grace Hopper conference. So it was like my first time to the US, all paid by Google, which is like so great. Um, and yeah, I think um, if this is something that is important for you, I think a lot of companies have uh, different ways they contribute to uh, diversity and inclusion. So you can definitely check that out. And yeah. Uh, okay, uh, thanks, Monica. Uh, we'll be having breakout sessions after after the entire Q and A. So if you want to get into more more details about about the things that panelists are saying, you can you can stay for a while. But yeah, maybe Francis wants to talk more about because Francis has not done general software engineering things. So maybe you can talk more about your experiences. There's something interesting to share. How have your internships? Uh, how how are they different from SWE? Um, I think uh, for me, the, the first internship that I did was in um, cybersecurity. So like the reason why I did cybersecurity at, at that point in time um, was because it was the most um, difficult thing for me to do at that point in time. Like, it, was just, it was the most challenging and it gave me the opportunity to like, explore more into this skill law. And so at that point in time, I didn't take the cybersecurity module. I just applied and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, this is at DSO, by the way. Yeah, so... Um, uh, I don't know how, but I managed, I, could, I managed to get in without much um, experience. Yeah, then um, through that experience, um, it, was, it was pretty interesting because it, it made me realize that um, cybersecurity is not easy. <laughs> and I subsequently took the modules um, that were related to that. And then I subsequently realized that cybersecurity is really, really not easy. So I got out of that. And then I did um, um, augmented reality and virtual reality stuff, yeah, which is like now. Yeah, so. Sometimes, you know, in between internships, you get to learn something about yourself and also learn something about the field. Uh, whether to get in on it, uh, get in on it or out of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Thanks, Francis. Uh, Chris, do you want to say something? Hi, so, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm not muted. Okay, so you guys can hear me. So, um, if you guys are freshy and you're wondering, you know, I'm a freshy now, I'm not good enough to apply for internship. Let me tell you, I did an internship at Carousel in my year one summer. And uh, back then when I applied for it, I essentially knew nothing about web dev, yet they still took me as a web dev, uh, as, a, as a software engineer in the web team. So yeah, you guys can do it. And essentially you guys just need to develop a very good understanding of reasoning about code. And that's what a lot of employ- employers are looking for at the moment. Yeah, so really you don't have to have a, a lot of projects done before. You don't, re- you don't have to have a lot of experience to think you are good enough to secure an internship. And uh, let me just share with you like uh, how taking up internships really helped me to help me in my school life essentially. So you realize that in your school life, a lot of things are very tough. You, you are probably sometimes you're like writing code in, at 3 a.m. You're just thinking like, what's the reason I'm doing this? Why am I like writing code at 3 a.m. trying to debug code? And I find that, you know, when you go and take up an internship, it really contextualizes things and helps you to develop a purpose as to why you're learning all of this in school. So let me just give an example. For example, right now I'm taking this software engineering mod and you're just like pushing Git commits and like learning how to use Git and all. But the thing is when you're working on a very small project in school, 
it's very difficult for you to like understand why you know git is such a useful tool and what problem it's trying to solve but when you take up an internship and you work on very large code bases and that's when you finally realize how useful git is when you're working with other developers and how useful code reviews are so these are things that these are experiences that you really can't gain without going to work on an internship like if you just like work on school projects all day you just do your homework all day you just essentially won't be exposed to like the reason why we are learning all of this in school of course uh probably some pros will tell you will tell you like what are the reason why you learn certain concepts but these type of things you sort of have to experience it yourself so uh in fact in a, a few internships i did was at before was at the um dso national laboratories so back then when i was there i was uh, writing some um national security related code and that's when it really like helped me develop a purpose as to why i joined computer science and why i'm taking up a tech job because i realized that every single line of code that i write i was actually enhancing the nation's security and that really gave me a reason as to why I go to school, as to why I study in university. So to all the freshies there, or like anyone who feel that you are not good enough, it's never too late to start, just start now. You never know who will just like pick you up and like the mentors you meet along the way, they are just invaluable. Yep, thank you. Thanks Chris. Francis, you were raising your hand. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to add something. So like, yeah. you know, um, someone was asking about uh, Talent Connect. And so I, I think that a talent, if you don't, if you don't know already, right? Um, if you don't already know, Talent Connect is this portal on NUS that has like um that invites um, people from industry and the, and the recruiters to like put up job postings on on this this uh, platform. And so it's like a pretty, I think uh almost like a a brainless way to get an internship because like, you just upload your resume once and you can just uh, apply, 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 apply. But eventually you get something, right? And those people who are on the platform, um, are looking for interns who are undergrads. So you, so so you you know very clearly that these um companies that are on the platform are looking for people like you, yeah. So I think that's like a if you don't go there, right? I think it's like a a waste. And some more is um by NUS, so I help NUS to plug. Okay. Can I? Thanks. Can I just shoot it a bit? Yeah. No head. Yeah, so I, 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 feel, I feel like the best internships will not be found on Talent Connect. So yeah, I, I think you can you can definitely find like a lot of good internships on Talent Connect. I'm, I'm sure. I, I've never actually checked. But uh, if you if you want to find the, I the, the really the best internships will not be there. I don't think Google is there. I don't think Facebook is there. Uh, so the, the, these for these internships you need to find them yourself. And uh, and then the talent connect part is just a formality to like to to be able to do it uh, under SIT uh, for the CS grads among us. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, on that point, right, um, so my point of view is that no, the big companies aren't the only companies out there. And, you know, I mean, of course, you should reach for the stars. Definitely. Yeah, but I mean, you know, just the ease of like clicking, 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 clicking. I, I mean, if you want to shoot like as many resumes as you want, I think that's quite a simple way. Like I said, it's the brainless way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would also probably want to kind of correct myself earlier. Like, I don't think the, the big companies are not the best, are not equivalent to the best companies. Uh. So that, that it, it, really, it really depends on what you want to do. So uh, like for some, like I think personally, like a big company would be a good fit for me, but, uh, and for I think quite a few people, uh, the big company will also be a good fit for them. But it's not, it's really based on like, uh, you, you also need to decide based on what you want to do with your life, I guess, uh, which is I guess a, a much bigger question that I don't think any of us can tell you like what's a good internship. Uh, mm. Yeah, but for me, a good internship will not be found on China Connect. Then, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Francis and Ilian. Uh, since uh, since we have started moving into the uh, questions asked by the audience already, I think we'll 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 actually move, move now. Start looking at the questions from Slido. So I think Stephen will start sharing his screen now. So I'll stop. Yep. Yeah. All yours, Stephen. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Hello everyone. Yeah, sorry we are a bit uh, over time. It seems that we are going to run out like much longer because of the unexpected cool responses from the panelists. And yeah, so now we are going to start with the questions from the audience. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask anytime. You can just like scan the QR code here or enter the project intern hashtag in the Slido. And yeah, let's let's just go directly with the first question. How do engineering positions in trading firms compare to big techs in terms of job scope, learning opportunities, management, and etc.? Maybe Bernard want to answer this question first. 
I'll try to say something about it. Um, but I'm not sure if I can actually give a very accurate comparison because, um, well, I, I don't know about the big tech side. Um, but, I, but I think firstly to address, uh, you are comparing trading firms to big tech. That's, um, you should know firstly that trading firms are a lot smaller in terms of headcount or compared to those big tech companies. I think the trading firms are more like moderate size, like say 100 to 1,000 people, whereas big tech has much more people than that. And um, because of this, uh, there aren't really many like uh, uh, ma many like departments within the software engineering group, within software engineers in a trading company. It's uh, I would say most of the software engineers uh, kind of work together. Depending on the project, we may do specific things uh, related to particular parts of the business. But uh, in general, after after the project, I say after a few months, we we just move around to do whatever interests us and whatever uh, new new developments that that come up. So yeah, I think that's that would be a difference. And also because of the much smaller hit count, there is a lot less of a uh, like middle management kind of thing. Most of um, most of the software engineers just uh are all just called software engineers and we just work, work together on, on the same code. Yeah, we review each other's code basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe someone can elaborate from the big yeah. tech side. Yeah, maybe other other panelists who, who works in like big tech or now how it works to compare. Why do you choose big tech over like trading firms? Other panelists? I, I think uh, we can't really compare because none of us have like been in the training firms. I mean, okay, uh, other yeah, than yeah. Brother, <laughs> yeah. I guess okay, I can talk a bit yeah. about like job scope. Uh, so I think it's useful to kind of think about, I mean, not just like training companies versus big tech, but also like when looking just at in general. different companies, yeah, in general, like oftentimes your job scope and the technical opportunities, um, differ based on what the company is doing. So like the company's mission, the products that the companies are working on. So for trading firms, the mission is to make money, I guess. Um, I guess there's, there's more to that, but you know, that's a very surface answer. But other companies may be like building products, they may be like building products that like users use. And there are also um, companies that are like building um, infrastructure, right, that other engineers use. So um, different uh, kind of projects that you'll be working on at different companies will kind of affect things like your job scope and your learning opportunities. Yeah, I, I, I think the company's culture also like makes a very big difference here. So like, uh, I, I think Kenneth has like uh, started like talking about this, but I think I can expand that. So like, uh, so I entered at uh, Facebook last year. So the, so Facebook start, is a, uh, basically a, the, a humongous uh, social networking company, right? So th this also extends to its internal culture. So the, like the internal culture is that like, it's very open and very social. So there are things that uh, build like community within the company. So uh, things like free, free lunch Wednesdays and uh, there's this BFF program where like after work, anytime after outside, outside office hours, you can like, organize like a dinner and you get a giant budget and you can spend and you can attend as many BFFs as you want, uh, even within the same day. So it's like it, it's really just trying to like uh, help people bond within a company so that uh, like people can like collaborate better. And uh, apart from that, so that there's also more of that collaboration stuff. Like so, Facebook has a very very open internal culture as well. So like uh, almost everything is visible to any employee that uh, in the company. So like for for example, I could have like you know before Facebook's blockchain thing was announced, like I I went into the internal system and like I I found some stuff about the blockchain stuff. You know, so cool, but I, I mean, none of us who say anything about it, but it's like, you know, that there's such, there's a level of trust within a company that like, you know, you can, you can see uh, a lot of internal resources that will typically be treated as like, like company secrets uh, in other companies, especially like, the, I think the, the polar opposite of this culture would be like, like Apple. I've, uh, I've never worked there, but I've heard like, they are very compartmentalized and uh, I don't think I have any like Apple interns here. So we can't really like talk about it here. Yeah. Thanks, Ilya. Yeah, probably we'll just uh, move on to the next question. What are some good one-month internships we can consider? Perhaps any of the panelists who were working for like winter internship before or short internship?
Any idea? I think it depends, ah. right? Because uh, there are two different definitions of winter here. So there's like the winter internship definition in Singapore where it's over like the winter break uh, of NUS at the end of the year, which is about one month-ish. But there's also like the winter internship definition of the US where it's actually just like an off-season internship. It would still be like about 12 weeks or 16 weeks, like about three to four months, except that it starts during winter. Uh, so... Mm, if you are talking about winter in general, like uh, about the US, then like it's basically the same as any other. Like any sufficiently large enough company should offer off-season internships if you want to do that. Uh, but in Singapore itself, I'm not sure, but I think inside uh, the list that uh, we had in the slides just now, so I think one of our core team members, Suyash, actually created uh, a list. I think they might have. You might be able to find some information there, and maybe like. Uh, reach out to them. So, uh, for example, I heard Vicence uh, do take in winter interns, but like, it's not limited to that. I think it might also be helpful to go to Talent Connect because I think they might have some additional information there as well. Okay, thanks, Julius. Yeah, probably just to add on a little bit more because like I did like one month internship, uh, one month internship before. Yeah, so as far as I know, like there are not many companies who want to accept like interns for like one month, especially in Singapore. Yeah, uh, personally, I did my one month internship before in Indonesia. So it was just, uh, it was a small startup. So I believe that usually, and there are actually a number of startups in Indonesia before that did like one month internship. And I believe that probably most companies, they don't have like the one the one month internship because yeah, in one month, you do, you cannot really like, learn so much stuff, especially when you go into big companies, typically in the first month, you will just like get to now familiarize with like all the stuff there. So one month is usually like, there's not a lot of things that you can learn at such a short time. And that's why probably like many companies don't offer such things. Yeah. And moving on to the next question. Oh yeah, yeah, for, uh, for the, uh, second question, yeah, I believe that this question, besides finding the top companies that doesn't come to mind, uh, we believe that you can probably like uh, search by yourself this one in Google. So, yeah, we believe we can. Pro you can. Pro uh, we will just skip this question for now, as we are sort of uh, we don't have like that much time. Uh, yeah, why is our panelist so good all working at the top companies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, we can. We will probably just skip this one. <laughs> Yeah, what are the desirable skills that an intern should have? I have zero programming background before uni and I'm not feeling confident even as a year two CS student. Yeah, probably any of, of the panelists want to help? Uh, I think I can jump in here because I also started um, CS in uni without any programming experience before. So it was, I mean, I think I'm a lot of people experience this, like those with no experience, like you feel like, well, so scary, you got so many geniuses around you, like people have been coding since primary school and that kind of stuff. But I feel that um, after a while, uh, the most important thing is like the mindset that you'll be able to learn and um, you'll be able to catch up in some way. Like maybe, like for me, I would definitely not go into the competitive programming uh, skill and that I can get gold medal or whatnot. But I believe that with um, hard work and discipline, then I can like uh, get good enough to be able to uh, learn all the software engineering skills. So the desirable skills is perhaps like more of the non-technical one, like being open-minded to learn, uh, taking feedback from other people, being having a growth mindset and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, thanks Monica. Have yeah, yeah, I yeah I can't second like the growth mindset stuff enough because when companies uh, get you for internship, they don't expect you to know everything. And actually, it's funny because at like Facebook and Google, they actually expect very very little. They expect to know very very little. Like there no, they don't need to know PHP, which is what they use. They don't need you to know how to use version control. Um, they don't use Git anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so companies really just want someone who can pick up things fast can learn the things that they need to do because um, it's very likely that you don't know the specific programming languages or the frameworks that they use anyway. So 
it's far more important that like you, you demonstrate that um, you have the ability to learn and apply things quickly and make like, connections more, more than um, you're super, uh, more than like you have a very deep knowledge in one particular thing and maybe not anything else. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jun. So we will just move on to the next question. How do you balance schoolwork and preparing for technical interviews? Is it necessary to make sacrifices here? I remember Ilyam, I think, want to talk something about this before. <laughs> yeah, so personally, I think, uh, yeah, so uh, again, this really depends on what you want to do with your life. But uh, for, so for, for me, I think that uh, like preparing for the interview is way more important than, uh, than schoolwork. So I would always prioritize interviews and like, uh, projects outside and open source contribution over schoolwork. And so, uh, because of this, like, so when I was applying for my internships two years ago, I would, um, I, I, yeah, I, I applied during the, the exam period, which is something that I do not recommend, but so, but I did it. And uh, so because of that, I interviewed during like the exam, like the exam time, like during reading week and after that, uh, during the exam week itself. So what I did, I, I just literally just did not study for the exams. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, the, the grades definitely tank, but I got my, uh, I got some, I got a Zendesk offer and a Facebook offer from that period. So uh, I, I feel like the, the, you know, the incremental gains in the grades completely not worth the, the like lo losing out on like a Zendesk or a Facebook offer. So I would definitely like recommend uh, if you were, if your goals are like mine to only focus on technical interviews and just like chuck school aside. Maybe other panelists want to share about like when, when you prepare for your first interview or yeah, how did you do that before? So, so um, I want to provide like a counterpoint. So like a lot of people say grades don't matter, but uh, in some sense they actually do, especially if you're considering things like further studies. So say you want to do like, um, if, if in the future you want to have like a research role or you want to do ML related stuff, a lot of places require you to have at least a master's and PhD and to get good positions in, in good schools, then your grades actually have to be pretty decent. So it, it's kind of a balance, I guess. Like, like if, if that's one of the paths that you are considering to take, don't, don't throw school away entirely, yeah. Maybe I can just yeah, add, add something. Can I just add something? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd say um, maybe half of the companies that I applied for an internship uh, required me to put my grade uh, in a text box before uh, I mean before my my the rest of my resume. So I suspect that might be like a filter before they even start opening my resume. So in that sense, grade may be important. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so let's move on to the next question. As a year two business analytics student without much technical or industry skills, how do I maximize my chances of landing an internship? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we don't have like any business analytics student as part of uh, our panelists. But maybe Francis wanna share about like how a non-CS non -CS student uh, get like software engineering position. <laughs> we, we really tried to get someone from this. <laughs> yeah, but Francis, go ahead. Um, so I, I guess you say without much technical and industry skills, um, well, the first way to, to get about this is to go and learn, right? So there's a lot of material online, like YouTube, you know, like now you can see on LinkedIn, everyone's like doing some course on like Coursera or something. Yeah, so I guess, um, Long story short, I think you can make use of the time, whatever time you have to like maybe build up this um, technical competency. And there are also other um, non-tech roles, for example, um, design or maybe analytics. So like just think of like whatever you're doing in school and try to apply it into the, into the real world and you can market yourself that way. Like you can just say, oh, I did this um, a, a module in school and I know X. Yeah, and because I know X, the other guy doesn't know X, so therefore I'm a better candidate. Yeah, that kind of stuff, you know, just pitch yourself in a different way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, Francis. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, sorry everyone, because like, I, uh, I don't think we, were, we, will have, we have enough time to cover all of the questions. But after this, we'll go into breakout rooms. 
so that if you still have any questions for any of our panelists, you can go to the breakout room. Wait, let me share the the next slide. And yeah, hold on a second. So in the meantime, I see like a couple of people yeah. leaving the the chat. I think uh, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah, totally fine. You don't want to talk to like any of us individually, but uh, there's always like the project intern Telegram group that you can ask for the questions there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, if if you if you're rushing somewhere or you don't want to don't don't have time for breakout rooms, you can just join the project intern group and ask your questions there. I think. Uh, everyone there is quite receptive to questions in general and will probably give you quite detailed responses. Yeah. So you can join the group. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, the next part, uh, uh, yeah, and just a little bit of you. Uh, we, are, we are opening our application to join the core team in any attacker. Uh, so if you are if you are passionate about our mission, want to help spreading the hacker culture, want to organize session like this, yeah, you can try. You can go to this link and apply for the to the core team. <laughs> and yeah, uh, you can also go to the Telegram Telegram group Telegram channel. As we mentioned before, you can you can always email us anytime as well to the core team as any attacker for any other inquiries. And yeah, we are moving to the next part, which is the breakout rooms. So uh, right after this, yeah, uh, we are already approaching the, the end of our session, the project in session for today. And at the last part, it's, uh, this is like sort of optional. So for those of you who still have like any questions to any of our, our panelists, we'll open like uh, six breakout rooms here and you can just like rename yourself to this, like uh, let's say zero one and then your name followed by your name. And then we will move you to the breakout room where like our panelists is there, yeah. Um. Uh, also, at the same time, please, please fill out the feedback form. Uh, this is the first time we are doing the entire event online, and we really appreciate some feedback as to how we can improve our future events. So yeah, please, please take out time to fill out the feedback form. The recordings and the slides will be there uh, at the relevant links. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>